Good day, Royal fans. Welcome back to another installment. Today's top story. What Meghan and Harry really wanted from Megxit exposed. Meghan and Harry started their new lives away from the Royal front line on April 1st. The couple have reportedly relocated to LA, California in recent weeks in an attempt to be closer to their agents and Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland. Yet, recent posts claim Harry is feeling more isolated than ever in the US, showing he potentially regrets his decision to leave the firm. A glance back on their original proposal from January shows that they truly wanted from Exit and what other routes they could have taken. According to royal correspondent Katie Nicole, writing in Vanity Fair in January, the couple had hoped their progressive new roles within the monarchy would be much more lenient. Explaining their original wishes, she wrote, The couple said they will keep their UK base, Frogmore Cottage, in Windsor. It is widely expected that they will live in Canada for the rest of the year, where they can focus on their work within the Commonwealth. <clears throat> they will also keep their taxpayer-funded protection offices in return for carrying out royal duties on behalf of the Queen. In their statement, the couple said they plan to continue to honour our duty to the Queen, the Commonwealth and our patronages. Their website also indicated that they were willing to forego the sovereign grant. However, they conceded that this was only covered 5% of the expenses and did not specify how much money they hoped to receive from Charles's Duchy of Cornwall estate. Yet, in the months since, it appears none of these expectations proved possible. Royal sources told Vanity Fair back at the time that nothing has been ruled in or out. The couple reportedly rushed to make the announcement public, leaving the rest of the royals in shock. Buckingham Palace then quickly published a statement saying formal discussions were yet to take place. Royal correspondent Tom Bradby also pointed out in another Times article that this would not be advantageous to the firm either. The couple would be able to speak out in a way comparable to Princess Diana's shocking 1995 Panorama interview, but to a US broadcaster. The Times article continued, the other extreme is that they remain within the fold but spend time abroad on other interests. This would mean they could continue with their UK charities and live at Frogmore Cottage. These were the two extremes of the Megxit deal, yet the Sussexes had clearly pitched an agreement which has somewhere in between. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. There's an interesting recap of the Megxit deals and agreements that was hoped for. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time with more World Juicy News. Goodbye for now.